Hi, and welcome to the Secret Hit Songwriting Formula. If you're new to the channel on YouTube, please be sure to subscribe. Or if you're watching on Facebook, please be sure to like this page. We do weekly videos here showing you how to recognize the patterns found in hit songs because there is a secret hit songwriting formula. All hit songs, past and present day, that have become modern hits have gone on to become hits because they have followed certain patterns embedded within the compositions that they must follow in order to catch on and become commercially successful. We show you those patterns here so you can use them in your songs. So today we'll be looking at a classic by the Smashing Pumpkins, 1979. This song always kind of hit a special spot for me. It's just got such a cool mood to it, a very cool atmosphere to it. And this song follows the formula of fives. And that means that, as always, we're looking for a pattern of self-similarity, okay? Meaning the part contains the whole and the whole contains the part. The part being a five-note rhythmic hook, okay? We're looking for self-similarity in the verse and the chorus because there's only two sections, two song sections in 1979. And we want to see a five-note rhythmic hook uh, present itself clearly and obviously in a predictable way. Uh, in both the verse and the chorus, okay? So if we're just gonna start out singing this classic, Shake Down 1979 Cool kids never have the time, okay? It's just kind of going by on a live wire right up up the street, you and I should meet. So instead of counting the syllables, we're kind of listening for the rhythms. June bug skipping like a stone. Right? There's a five going on there. With the headlights pointed at the down. Okay? So I wanted to start singing and give you a little bit of the flow because sometimes we want to just start adding up these syllables one by one, but sometimes we want to just look at the flow lyrically and rhythmically of the whole section just to see if certain patterns are obviously emerging. That's what's happening here in this verse, okay? We start to see a five note pattern emerge. And the reason that we can label this pattern specifically this way, never have the time on a live wire right up off the street, okay? The reason we can label these as clear, identifiable five-note hooks is because they're occurring in the same place in the measure every time they occur. And we talk about that in our book, The Secret Hit Songwriting Formula. When you hear a certain hook appearing in the same beats in each measure, each time it appears, then that's cluing our ears in to identify that as the clear and obvious hook. That's even the same rhythm almost that happens here, right? We're listening for that stretched out rhythm. It's very syncopated, meaning it goes against the beat. 1979, right? We're looking for that five note hook that's going against the beat every time. Cool kids, one, two, three, four, five. Hear all those five notes every time stretch out like that against the beat. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? So that's by like, cluing us in that five note syncopated rhythm is appearing in the same uh, place in the measure every time. And in fact, it's always syncopated every time it appears. It's off the beat like that, so it's syncopated. And coincidentally, uh, you and I should meet even helps us, helps our ears by concluding that phrase with another five note hook. Okay, then the verse goes on. June bug. Skipping like a stone. Five note hook appearing in the same place again with the headlights pointed at the down. There's that five note hook in the same place again, syncopated. We were sure we'd never see an end to it all. Okay, again, because these are following that syncopated rhythm and appearing in the same place in the measure, it doesn't matter that we've sprinkled other syllables in front of it or after it. We were sure we one, two, three, four, five. Is appearing in the same place again, syncopated again. Okay, so that's how this five-note pattern works in the verses. There's a lot of insignificant syllables, but the five-note hook is dominant in those places that it appears. Okay, so that's setting up our subconscious mind and setting up our ears to expect another five-note hook in the chorus. 
And when our ears hear that five note hook in the chorus, our subconscious mind is very satisfied as if we've known the song all along. And that's the secret part that makes these songs tick, that makes them catch on and become popular, okay? Or have the potential to become popular rather, because again, we're talking about composing here, okay? So the chorus hits and I don't even care. To shake these zip of blues is that syncopated rhythm again. And we don't know just where our bones will rest to dust, I guess. Forgotten and absorbed. So again, I just wanted to sing it a little bit so we can start to hear another five note syncopated rhythmic pattern emerge, and it does. And I don't even care to shake these zip of blues. There's where the pattern emerges. It's still that bum, 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 bum. And look at that, it's even every other measure like it was in the verse. It's the same pattern. He's following the chorus. He's following it with very much detail, very much self-similarity. And we don't know just where our bones will rest to dust, I guess. Forgotten and absorbed. Even the first syllable in the word forgotten is insignificant because we're, again, you can sprinkle extra syllables before it if we're still following that five note syncopated place in the same place in the measure. To the earth below. Oh, look at he even hints at the self-similarity of the verse by discarding another little five-note phrase. To the air below. Okay, cool. But the part of the chorus that really matters is these five-note rhythmic hooks that are syncopated and appearing in the same places every time. This is just a bonus. Okay, cool. And just like coincidentally, and we don't know just, is another bonus. One, two, three, four, five. Another little bonus there. Okay, cool. So we can see how the verse and the chorus both follow a five note rhythmic hook. Uh, in this case, it's following that significant rule that it has to appear in the same place in every measure, the place it appears, every time it appears. And that way you can sprinkle as many syllables as it, you want before and after it. And it doesn't have to divide neatly into fives every time. Um, that's when you can follow that rule, because to follow the formula of fives, you don't need to neatly be dividing into clear, obvious five-note hooks every time. One of the ways, if you don't want to do it every time, is to do it like this song does it. Follow the rule where you're putting it in the same place in the measure each time it appears. And in this case, he's doing the added bonus of always making it syncopated, right? That's how we can, our ears can clearly identify that five-note hook. If you need more help with this, please visit www.secrethitsongwritingformula.com. We have the only ebook in the world there that gives away all of the patterns found in hit songs throughout the decades, past and present, that your songs must follow if you want to have them contain the potential to become radio hits. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.